Hey guys, gals, I thought I would uh, give you a little preview of what's coming for the fall workshop. It is a cloudy Sunday morning. I'm hanging out with the ducks. The dogs don't know I'm cooking, so they're probably sleeping on the couch inside. I got the Weber grill cooking right at 275 degrees. And here's what we got going on. I posted a picture of these yesterday. These are only about half done right now. These are chicken legs, and I've got a classic indirect heat. I've got full packet of mesquite chips on this burner and that burner's on high and I got another pack of them over here and that burner's on high everything else in the middle is off so we're on a pure indirect cooking and these racks man I'm gonna get this covered I just want to again you can see nothing's touching anything there's air exposed all around and uh, my grill just happens to 275 beautifully with just those two burners on and then the other burners off this is a six burner Weber it's pretty badass grill Here's what they look like before uh, I put them in. And I, I guess I can write down in the video notes for you. I know, oh, what a recipe. Uh, it's just a rub I made up out of my head yesterday. But it is the one thing in it that definitely has carbohydrates for those of you on keto. And I decided to go with the real stuff because this is for a workshop party. Uh, but this would still be very, very keto. And I want to talk to you about how you could pre-make a lot of meals using this technique uh, in that particular rack that's in there and still be, even with using some sugar, very, very keto. I used three tablespoons of brown sugar to make a great big jar, uh, a full uh, quart jar, a quart, a quart, nah, a pint, a pint jar of this rub. Yeah, I think it's a pint. Anyway, and um, when I did that, I uh, added a bunch of other stuff too that I'll talk about. I did uh, some cocoa powder. That's actually very, very low carb, about three tablespoons of that, three tablespoons of salt, uh, about two tablespoons of black pepper, uh, some paprika, and some other stuff. Again, I'll write it all up. But when I did the math, I made over 90 wings. This is my second to my last batch going right now. I've got some more in there. i got to lay another layer of these down. I'm waiting for them to defrost. I had, I had to take some out of the freezer. So I got them sitting in the sous vide cooker at like 80 degrees for about 10 minutes to defrost them fast. That's a hack you can do if you have a sous vide cooker. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get the other layer down. I'm going to make almost 100 wings, three tablespoons. If I used all the rub, and I, qu I won't quite use all the rub, it'd be 0.4 carbohydrates of sugar. You add the garlic and some other things in there. At the most, you're looking at a half a carb a leg. And they're really good. It's totally worth it for the flavor that little bit of brown sugar adds. Um, absolutely fantastic. Of course, you can make them without it, um, but the way that caramelizes on that skin and crisps that skin it is these are stupid good is what i'm getting at but i wanted to talk to you about how you can use this technique and you can go zero carb you can make whatever rub you want uh right here to do a lot of pre-prep for your meal i'm making almost 100 of these things they're going to go in great big vacuum seal bags get vacuum sealed and freezed and people that have been here we do that all the time for the workshops because we have to there's no way i can do all of the cooking we do uh, for people over three days in, in, in the three days and run the workshop. It's not doable. So we have to pre-cook. No one's ever said, gee, that doesn't taste good. <laughs> not one time. In fact, the only time we've ever had messed ups is when we've tried to cook and tried to rush it and not been quite the quality I want. Whenever we pre-cook and we can take our time, we vacuum seal and freeze, this stuff comes out good. So what I'm getting at is you can make up a rub or two or three rubs and get this is organic chicken a great big pack of three individual packs, cryovac together, it's gonna to be somewhere between 15 and 18 legs, because there's between five and six legs in each pack at Costco, is about $8.50. It'll vary because they do it by the pound, but it'll be somewhere between eight and nine bucks for that much chicken. That is a lot of organic, dark meat, fatty, delicious, skin on chicken that you can put anything you want on. So what you do then, is you, if you're batching this out on a weekend, you could make 48 of these easy. It's two batches. You could make them with two different rubs. You could make them with four different rubs. Take them out, vacuum seal them, label them, throw them in your freezer, and all you got to do is take them out and warm them up. If they're frozen and you forgot to take them out, right, and they're already vacuum sealed, and you got, man, I forgot to take food out, and I just got home from work, and I don't feel like... Grab one of your packs of anything you do this with, these included, but you can pre-cook anything and have it vacuum sealed in a vacuum sealed bag. This is why you should own a sous vide cooker, not only for cooking, but for hacks like this. Pitch it in there, and since you're gonna eat it, instead of just defrosting like I'm doing, 
Turn it up to 140, 150 degrees. It's a perfect serving temperature. Whip it in there, and when you're ready to eat, just take it out. You won't have to crisp it up or any of that stuff because it's already cooked. If you want to crisp it up, hey, you can throw it on the grill for a few minutes to crisp the skin, and that might not be a bad idea after it's been frozen. But you see what I'm saying? For, let's say, $16, you can make about 30 chicken legs organic chicken legs in two or three different flavors have them all ready to go and you know three for a man two for a lady generally is a meal um so you put about five to six if you're a couple if you're a family you might freeze that much of it but hey it's a done deal it's ready to go and you could you know you could put it in you could freeze them in, in like the smaller bags and do two to three per bag and then it's really flexible because if you're a family and you freeze all that and the kids go off to screw off and hang out at the neighbors and it's just you and your husband or you and your wife and you're going to eat tonight and you don't need that much you don't want to take that much out well now you have individual packets that's how i usually do it now for the workshop i'll you know i'll put in you know freaking 30 to a pack because we just need to be able to grab our packs bring them out and cook for people but man i'm telling you this technique of this indirect heat with these racks and you can do this in an oven one really important thing you'll see here i've made these little fake foil pans here to catch all that grease that's dripping down there since especially since i'm not running the grill so one i won't have flare-ups but what i'll have is a ton of grease on those burners and then i'm going to burn that grease off it's going to overheat my grill elements and stuff like that so having those little pans when i'm done i'll just take them away and uh be done with it and and throw them out now there will be some grease that got by because they're not really pans they're a foil and we always have leaks with foil Here's a couple of hacks. Number one, when you're done cooking, leave them alone until they get cold. That way the grease will congeal and it will be easy to throw away. And when you pick it up, it won't all spill out and waste the fact that you did it in the first place. Number two, once you've done that, go ahead, turn your burners on high, bring the grill up to full high heat temperature, open the lid when you do that, burn off whatever got through and kill your grill. When you're doing that, set an alarm I have forgot and, and scorched grills before. I don't do it anymore because I have a rule now. Every time I turn a grill on to do anything, I set a timer, no matter what I'm doing with it. If I'm standing right there looking at it, I set a timer because uh, I don't want to burn up a $2,000 grill. That would just suck. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this. Again, this is made with coffee, 100% cocoa powder. People think chocolate. Ah, oh, it's sweet. It's sugar. It's the carbs. No, it's not. Not if it's just cacao. And people say cacao and cocoa are different. Well, they might be. If it says cocoa powder and it's made for making chocolate milk, it's different. If it's 100% cocoa powder, that is cacao. It's the same thing. There's not like two different trees, two different nuts, what have you. Uh, but chocolate and coffee in a rub you do a smoke with, it gives a darkness and a character that's hard to explain. You put a little bit of sugar in with that, get some caramelization. Use brown sugar when you do it. Oh, oh. Add some smoke. And we're going to be having this with a smoked cocktail by master mixologist David Siegler and some smoked cheese and those. And that's just one course of a four-course paired day of fun on Friday at the workshop. You guys will be hanging out here with me. Catch you later.